Some people have a problem with the prosperity gospel. I guess I would have a problem with it too. If by prosperity gospel, you mean that the idea that if you believe in Jesus, you will be a millionaire, a billionaire, and you'll never have a downtime in life. If that's what you mean by the prosperity gospel, then yes, I would have a problem with that too. But some people have a problem with the prosperity gospel simply because it says that you can be rich and you can be healthy and you can be happy. Some people have a problem with the prosperity gospel because the so-called prosperity gospel preachers tell you that God wants you to be healthy and happy and wealthy. On the other side of the fallacy of the prosperity gospel is the poverty gospel. The idea that if you are a true believer in God, you'll be miserable and poor and suffering. <laughs> the fact is, the gospel of Jesus Christ may not be the prosperity gospel with capital letters in front of every word, but the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of prosperity. Christ himself announced his ministry by saying that he had come to bring sight to the blind, to bring freedom to the captives, that the lame would walk again, and that the good news would be preached to the poor. So if you're blind, you'll see. If you are deaf, you will hear. If you are lame, you will walk. If you are poor, you'll learn to be happy in your poverty. That is inconsistent with the interpretation of this scripture that Christ quoted. If you're blame, if you're blind, blame it would be blind and lame. If you're blind, you'll see. If you're lame, you'll walk. If you're deaf, you will hear. If you're poor, you will be rich. The the gospel of salvation, the Greek word is sozo. That salvation is akin to the Hebrew word shalom. It means that you have a whole, a full life. Wholeness, wellness. It's not just about dying and going to heaven. It's about being happy. It's about being healthy. It's about being generous. It's about being selfless. It's about being giving. It's about all of that. So, can you say that God would want to make you happy and full of joy and love and kindness and gentleness and faith and goodness? Jesus said, I come that they might have life and life more abundantly. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. The meaning of abundance means more than enough. It means overflowing. It means you have a one liter bottle, you have two liters of oil. So you need to get another bottle. That's abundance. It means if your expenses are a thousand bucks, you get two thousand bucks. That's abundance. To have less than your expenses is not abundance. It's not an abundant life. That's not the life that Christ came to give. There is the time of suffering. As Paul the Apostle himself said, I've learned to be abased and I have learned to abound. 
Because we are followers of Christ, there is a time when we embrace the cross. That is Good Friday. But Good Friday is always followed by a kind of quiet Saturday. And then Easter Sunday, when there is resurrection and death is conquered and there is no more death. There is victory over death. That's what we just celebrated Easter last Sunday. Good Friday is always followed by Easter Sunday. If the Spirit of Christ lives in you, because it is the Spirit that resurrected Christ. So, if we truly live in the Gospel of Jesus Christ, there is no poverty without a resulting abundance. You've got to be honest with the Scriptures. If there's only poverty and it's not followed by abundance, then where's the Spirit? Where's the Holy Spirit? There are times when we choose to suffer financially because we've chosen to take up the cross. That's like Good Friday. But taking up the cross is always followed by the resurrection, Easter Sunday. If we have chosen to partake in poverty, then there must come a time of abundance if indeed the Holy Spirit lives in us. Good Friday, Easter Sunday. If you have a week of Good Fridays, that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a poverty gospel. Be honest. <clears throat> the gospel of Jesus Christ is not the prosperity gospel, but it is a gospel of prosperity. If Christ came to give us an abundant life, and hardly any Christian nowadays would have a problem with the idea that God wants to give you too much joy, that God wants to give you too much faith, that God wants to give you too much grace, we won't have any problem with that. That God wants to give you too much hope, more hope than you need, more faith than you need, more joy than you need, more kindness than you need, more graciousness than you need, more holiness than you need, more money than you need. Why does that sound odd? Why is money different from love and kindness and joy and faith and hope and wisdom? Why is it okay to have more than we need of all of that, but it's not okay to have more than we need of money. If that is how we feel in our heart, it means money has a special place in our heart. Money has a special place. It occupies a different category. And I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty close to idolatry to me. If we are so afraid of money that we can have an abundance of everything else except money, it seems to me indicative of an idolatry of money. Christ came that we might have life and life more abundantly in every area. And that, unfortunately, includes money. If we are to believe in the full gospel of Christ, we have to accept that God does want us to have more than enough money as well as everything else. James, the writer of the epistle, probably the brother of Jesus, said that if someone comes to you hungry and cold, without clothes. You have to feed him and clothe him. You don't tell him, be warm and feel, now go your way. God bless you. I'll pray for you. James said, you need to feed him and clothe him. So where's the food and the clothes going to come from? They don't appear out of thin air, conjured up from spirits. 
Someone's got to pay for them. And how are you going to give that person food and clothing if you don't have more than enough? Sure, it's a nice heroic act if you give him your last meal and the shirt off your back. But that's all you're ever going to do. How are you going to help the next guy that comes along? John the Baptist said, if you have two shirts, give one away. If you've got two pairs of shoes, give one pair away. So there needs to be an abundance. There needs to be a more than enough if you are serious about helping others. If I'm serious about helping others, I need more than enough. Because you can only be heroic once. You can only give away your last pair of shoes once. And you can't help anyone else after that. What you need is an abundance of shoes. An endless cash flow. A positive cash flow. That keeps flowing. So it can keep flowing, not just to you, but through you to others who need it too. And if you ask me, that sounds more like the gospel to me. To clothe those who have no clothes and to feed the hungry. That sounds more like the gospel to me than to sit in an armchair in a comfortable middle class life and criticize people who talk about the so-called prosperity gospel. No, it's time for those who believe in the gospel to show the power of the results of the gospel, the abundance life, first in your own life and then overflowing through you to all the people around you. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ.